You know what they say about guys with large record collections? No, seriously. Do you know what they say about guys with large record collections? Ah, uh, forget it. You're listening to Vinyl Community Podcast. Welcome back, buddies. New concept here on the podcast, Vinyl Community Podcast. I am Concert Buddy, and this is Podcast Unite. Boom. That's where, the, that, that's where the special <laughs> effects are supposed to be, but we're, we're poor around here, so we don't have special effects. I am joined by the hosts of Two Guys Talking About Records, Jim Gleason, owner of Radio Wasteland Records. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you for having us. Hey, my pleasure. And then the one, the only, the guy I call the mayor, the arguably, not even arguably, <laughs> indisputably, the nicest guy in the vinyl community, Steve Carlson, on location. How are you doing? I I'm great. And I really wish I could get one of those like mayor hats, you know, like they have in the movies. Listen, if if <laughs> if, if, if 2023 goes real well, I think you guys might find room in the budget for for next year for the podcast. All right, perfect. Be like being a mayor to a stash. Oh, a stash. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, uh, real excited to have these guys on because, well, like me and vinyl community podcast these guys united and and got their podcast off the ground so we'll kind of get into that but just to kind of quickly dispense with the formalities how i got to know these guys and and first it started with steve and kind of walking that back to the the vinyl community i'm using quotation marks for if you're listening uh, wherever you are vinyl community on youtube and a couple of years ago before i started doing videos less than two years ago I was just a creeper. I was a lurker. I was watching these guys talking records and I was learning and, <laughs> and burning. And I was just looking for the sense of community to learn things and, you know, get music recommendations like a lot of us are. And I kept hearing this name, Steve Carlson. And I was like, okay, Steve Carlson, I'd hear it on Mazzy's and I'd hear it there, whatever. And then unfortunately, like a lot of things, uh, uh, natural disaster raises Steve's profile, unfortunately, <laughs> for, for good and bad, for bad because, and, and we can talk about that, Steve, is, is you had a flood. There was a flood, a natural disaster, wiped out your record collection. And then next thing I know, and this is one of the things I really enjoy about the community, is that people were, every channel you're watching, Steve Carlson, here's this, yeah. send them records, send them uh, blood transfusions, whatever, whatever's not held down, send it to Steve. And I thought that was just a beautiful thing. And then that's how I found, literally found your channel from there and uh, sent you some records myself. But anyway, tell us just a high level, like what a what a, a baptism by fire, because I'm sure you're making videos. I think you started, what, 2017? Does that sound right to you? It might. I, I, you know, at my age, it's, just, it's, it's all blur. Who, who, it's all blur. It's just life moves yeah. at you fast. <laughs> yeah. So we really what, what happened is I was struggling on viewership. So I, I bought some dynamite and I went out and blew up this dam. Uh, by doing that, I knew I could flood my basement. I knew that that would then people love a disaster. People love trauma like that. They would get into this. They would find out and they would just they would feel sympathy and sub my channel. And I don't know why people do contests when, you know, set your house on fire, something like that. And, you know, it's it's easy. It's simple. And, you know, you uh, reap, reap, reap the rewards for it. So it's excellent. Now, it, it really was with that, you know, just one of those things. Two dams broke. Two dams bro damn damn that stamps and uh and, and luckily you know we were part of the lawsuit and we got a hundred dollars you know from the lawsuit big bucks big dams. bucks okay yep up uh, i'm sure the lawyer got a hundred too you couldn't even buy a one step you couldn't even buy a mobile fidelity one step with no, that no, no, to... <laughs> but the, it, it was incredible what uh what happened within the community and i you know most people know know that story but just how much love and how much was poured in and to this day i i've been really you know chance you've always been extremely generous with me and you know i just you know still people will go try this listen to this and it's it's been it's a true truly an awesome community well, and one thing that I really admire about you, Steve, is not only are you super nice, but matter of fact, you're no longer the mayor, you're the mastermind. Now that you've revealed your devious plot, you're the mastermind of the vinyl community. <laughs> and but, if uh, anybody else needs help on getting more subs, just let me know. We'll I'm picturing like Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam, you know, tiptoeing, and then they hit that. That's no, right. no, but no, one thing I really if, admire if, about you. Uh, oh, go ahead, Jim. Sorry. No, I was going to say, if I could add one thing more about the flood, Please. you mentioned Steve is one of the nicest guys in the vinyl community. He's just one of the nicest guys everywhere, but he has got the uh, best attitude. 
And we're in the same town. Uh, the flood didn't affect uh, didn't affect us here at the store. We were several blocks away from it, but uh, we were watching it very, very closely. And after things kind of hit the fan everywhere in Midland, Steve and I were in contact. And uh, I did go over there. I think uh, we, we lent you our uh, generator to kind of keep things yep. going and get the basement pump. So I was one of the ones to see that disaster up close than it was. And the whole time there, Steve's attitude was never one of despair. It was never like oh, collection. It was all, well, it happens. And I think that just reflects in just the, the personality that he has. And he's just, he's a great guy to be around and it's infectious that he's so cheerful about everything. No, you hit around the head yeah. because I, I can tell you, I, I could I wouldn't have been so nice. I'm just going to be honest. I, there would have been doom and gloom and 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 uh, kicking things and throwing things. But yeah, Steve. I mean, all those follow up videos. He's just like like I remember that video you had, Steve, of all the records at the curb, the trash man that come. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, there they are, and I'm just like, holy smokes! Like <laughs> I would just be so. I don't even know what I would be. I couldn't even comprehend. And you're just like, ho hum, you know, like stinks but life moves on i was like man that yep. is and that and like jim's saying that's like inspirational stuff because just to sure. to, to be able to just prioritize life and and be like you know it's a stuff and it's yeah it's a collection and like you said then on the other side just getting this avalanche of the vinyl community coming in like a, a flood of love i just made that up no i'm, I'm yep. dead serious but but no in all seriousness like it was people people coming through and 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 checking on you sending you stuff all that stuff and 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 one thing I, yeah, I definitely admire about you is that, that positive attitude, like Jim said, but but also you make it a point because you do videos twice a week, uh, Sundays and Thursdays, sometimes more. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. you are an in-demand YouTube celebrity, so sometimes more. <laughs> but but you're always quick. You're always quick to shout out channels and mention other channels that yeah. have, have raised their profile with me because you know again how people get on each other's radars is, is kind of the mystery of how this all works with YouTube. But, you know, you, you, you definitely elevate new channels, channels that you feel are, are, you know, need the light shined on them. So I, so again, like Jim said, that kind of speaks to like the kind of guy you are in the community. And, and it's no surprise that the troops rallied to, to call into action, to send you records that maybe some you wanted, maybe some you didn't, but, uh, but more importantly, where do your records live now? I, I never got to ask you that. Clear, hopefully not still in the basement. Hopefully you've you know, elevated we just something. We just finished our basement. Now it's carpeted. It's everything. Yeah. I could go down there, but I'm keeping it in my office <laughs> upstairs on the second floor. And just, you know, every time you see dark clouds, go, well, it's probably going to be a tornado now. And just pop off this part <laughs> of the house. You know, <laughs> There they went again. Well, damn it. I'm done. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so no, I, but it, it really, what it did is it's made me instead of having this massive, because there's about 12,000 albums and CDs. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been collecting for years and years and now, you know, I've narrowed it down to, you know, between three and 4,000 is where I'm going to keep it at. And I pull it to then bring it into Jim, who's already watched me do videos about him <laughs> and go, well, I know this album sucks. He didn't yeah. like it. Uh, but it's, you know, to kind of cure it and, and keep it manageable. And you get to an age in life where, I mean, I, I can't listen to all that in, in anyway. So, makes sense. Yeah. Well, so that that's a great segue, uh, Steve. Like, how you guys got together? Because Jim, tell us a little bit about, about your shop. It's in Midland, Michigan. I think I, I picked up on that. How long yep. have you been operating? Because it's a bold move to run a a, a, small, a business, yeah. let alone a and and especially in the quote unquote vinyl resurgence. It's a very competitive space with online and you know these these giant YouTube channels coming in and you know marking their territory. Yep. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the Radio Wasteland story and then how you guys, I'm assuming Steve's a customer. I'm, I'm assuming no restraining. Started that way, yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Not yet. Well, in uh, 2016, late 2016, I'm uh, in my 50s and having a little bit of a altering life change between jobs and wondering what the heck I was going to do next. Uh, coming out of higher education, I had uh, a big history in broadcasting as well, radio television going all the way back to uh, the 1980s, back when we had to carry bigger equipment than this stuff here. Uh, but uh, at the time, I was wondering what was going to happen, what I was going to do. I'd always been a record collector, and I'd started selling off a little bit of my collection here and there. And my family said, why don't you uh, just open up a record store? And I was like, yeah, right now, come on. I've never been a business owner in my life. I'd either been in broadcasting or higher ed. And you know, production, that was it. And uh, I said, well, you know, maybe we could do this. 
my wife's the brains of this. Uh, she's did some research and within the span of it feels like it was a whirlwind, but really over the course of about two months, we put our heads together, came up with a business plan, started uh, just uh, hitting the pavement, trying to figure out what we had to do, looking for a place to go. And uh, roughly about a week or so before Christmas, uh, in 2016, we settled on a location. We had the framework uh, ready to get, go with this, and we launched uh, and opened our doors on Friday the 13th of 2017. And again, kind of coming at this from a record collector standpoint, I always knew what I liked in record stores. You know, I've been going to them all my life, and I thought, this works, this doesn't. And you hear a lot of record collectors say, ah, if I ever have a record store, I'm going to do it this way. I was lucky enough to be able to do that. And uh, we have taken off and grown considerably since those early days in uh, early 17 uh, to the point now where, you know, we've got the active YouTube channel, very active Facebook page, not much on the other socials because I'm older, but uh, I keep <laughs> my toes in there. But uh, we have, we've got a, a fantastic clientele here in the uh, Midland area. Now we were also really lucky in the fact that Midland used to have a record store. Uh, Steve, I don't know if you remember the turntable, we'll go back that far on that one. No, I don't go back uh, But they far. had, yeah, they had closed, I think, somewhere in the late 90s or early 2000s. And so we uh, we live in an area in mid-Michigan that's uh, used to be referred to as the Tri-Cities. They call it something else now. It's Midland, Bay City, and Saginaw. It's the three, three cities all within probably about a half an hour of each other. Saginaw has had a, a record store there since the 1970s, very... Uh, very established and institutionalized there. Bay City's got a great one in, in the Electric Kish that's been there for a while as well. Midland did not have one. So that was another thing that worked in our favor in opening this up is that we had that little niche corner here to open up a, a, a real working record store that carried both used and new. And we've just been running with it ever since. And true, that's you mentioned earlier, that's where I met Steve. He uh, he sauntered in. I don't remember if it was in our old space, Steve, or if yeah, it, in, it in was. a smaller space next door. Space. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, you know, his, and his, I, he's I, I, like tripled now your space, haven't you? Yep. yep. And I do remember the first record Steve picked up from us as well. Uh oh. Well, you remember this? What was it? <laughs> what was it? Spaceman 3. It was oh, a Spaceman yeah. 3 that came out of my personal collection. Yeah. I had to sacrifice a little bit more of my personal collection. Well, Jim, I'm glad you brought that at up. the early that days was, of the store. <laughs> I was going to say, because, you know, I hear the stories and you read my mind. It, 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 it's scary. Like, yeah, are, like we're on this yeah. wavelength. But but a lot of record store owners, a very similar story, you know, to start the store, they have to use a lot of their own collection. How much of your own collection did you have to, to put out to get those bins filled and then start the churn? Not as much as I was fearing I would have had to do, um, okay. you know, maybe a couple hundred here, there, but there was the stuff that I did part with at the start were some big, big ones, <laughs> you know, and I'm on the quest now, like with Steve, but at a different angle that's, well, if I find these ever again, I'm going to get it and I'm going to keep it. And I have been adding a few things back into the collection, you know, and upgrading a little bit here and there, but uh, not as much. Uh, I had picked up in the, in the ramp up to the store, we went out and found a couple of smaller collections. Uh, the, the 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 name Radio Wasteland actually is my old radio show's name, oh. and so I carried that I carried that forward. It's a play on words going all the way back to uh, uh, Newton Minow calling uh, television a vast wasteland in the 1960s, and a whole convoluted story going into the name behind that. But the oddity is is that one of the first big collections I picked up was from an acquaintance at a radio station who had had, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this, Steve, they had some water damage and the room where they stored all of their old records was getting flooded and they had to pick everything up and move it. And the GM said, just get rid of them. And I just happened to see the post and saying, who wants these? Come get them. And I called them up within 10 minutes. And that afternoon I had about three or 4,000 records from a radio station wow. that helped foster our, our, our step forward into this. There was nothing huge in there, but it was a lot of great common stuff to get help get us going sure yeah. is it safe to say that uh, the lifeblood of your shop and, and any indie stock is, is that used because obviously we hear all the time about new vinyl prices going up margins are tight all that kind of stuff and there's only so much control you can have over that in terms of raising msrp and promotions and so forth but is used really the bread and butter for your shop it's about half and half believe it or not um the used yeah. market is big and we make uh, a better we make a better margin on that but we actually earn more in sales in new vinyl. And that's just because it is a lot more expensive. 
but we do our best to kind of curate that and keep a good balance of new stuff coming in. It's, you know, I wish I could have more new stock, but it's just not feasible space wise or, mon uh, you know, money wise. But uh, the used definitely does that because it helps us give a variety of stuff to people. I get high schoolers that come in that, uh, you know, they're on a really tight budget. They can't spend 30, 40, $50 on a new piece of vinyl, but they can drop two or three bucks or they hit our dollar bin and they go nuts in there and they love it. So we try to bring that even mix of, yes, we've got a lot of new stuff, but uh, the, the used stuff we go through more of simply because, but it's always tough. And I tell this to a lot of people too, is they don't make new old stuff. So you got to find mm -hmm. it where you can find it. Sure. Well, that's, that's a good point. How do you, are you, are you active in chasing down collections and leads or do you have the, the benefit of a lot of folks coming in and being like, you know, you buy records and then, you know, obviously that's a, it's a yep. mixed bag. Some people think they're sitting on a black gold <laughs> yeah. and they bring it in and it's like the Lawrence Welk all stars, right? Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse. And it, it happened uh, today. Somebody brought somebody and it, it's usually two or three folks a week. Do you buy records? And it, uh, it, once in a while, it's good. Most of the time, it is not. So again, it's that balance I talk about bringing stuff in to the store is it's got to be stuff that moves and sells. And there's sure. there's a lot. Today, and I'll, Steve, I'll share the story we're going to talk about it on our podcast later. Today's uh, batch was a roll up and I didn't uh, even bring them in. I went out to look at them in the car. Uh, the guy said, they're all in great shape. They went through a fire, but they're still okay. They're still pretty good. And I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> so I went out there and there were numerous Reader's Digest box sets. So you can tell where this collection was going. Sure. They were all singed and or covered with ash. Oh, and I'm like, I can't do anything with this. I, I really wish I could help you. But even in excellent condition, they would sit in my dollar room for a year. So, uh, but I, I do like it. As far as actively seeking it out, I attempt to buy one major collection a year. And by major collection, I'm talking in the three to seven or 8,000 uh, size margin. Okay. And I've been pretty lucky in finding those. Most of the other stuff comes into the store on a weekly basis, some of it good, some of it bad. Uh, but over the past two or three years, and Steve will attest to this, we've gotten very lucky in finding some primo stuff in larger collections. Um, I wish I could do more of that, but th we're pretty much a one person operation. My wife mm. has a full time job and helps when she can. And I've got a couple of other people that help as well, but it's pretty much just me. And so on my days off, I'm doing things like laundry and mowing the lawn and taking care of the house sure. instead sure. of hunting for records. Makes sense. Although Why I did I... take, uh, I did find a record collection on uh, Tuesday, Steve. So we'll talk about that. All right. Oh, look at that. Yeah, teasing. Look at what it, this yeah. is a radio yeah. guy. He's full of all these teasing. Um, real quick. <laughs> you know, putting some of your records out to start the store. Is it, what's the record? Like if, if somebody walked in tomorrow and you could have a wish, like, is there that like one record? Is it like the Bob Ludwig Zeppelin too? Like what, what it, it's gotta be top of mind. Like the one you want back. What is that one? The one that I want back. Well, there was two that I wanted back. One was the, uh, the British version of Piper at the Gates of Dawn, uh, from Pink Floyd. And I did mm -hmm. find that I let go of one of those and I shouldn't have, I had a U.S. and a U.K. I let the UK go and I was like, oh, I wanted no. that back. But the other one that, that I do miss is I had an original pressing uh, promo stamp, not a promo copy, but a promo stamp of Sonic Youth's Goo. And that was one of the big ones that helped launch us. And uh, I'd really love to find that one again. I gotcha. I gotcha. So Steve, so, you know, collaborating, we can get into the podcast here shortly, but you know, you, you, you get, you saunter in, to Jim's store one day and you just strike up this, uh, you know, I'm sure you're a repeat customer. See, Jim's seeing your face a lot. And like this guy is either he, he needs some more hobbies or he really likes what I'm putting out. But well, um, how do you find, how do you find knowing a, like a, on a personal level? Cause I know you go to shops all over your videos. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're a traveling guy through your, your work and whatnot, but having a, a personal relationship with somebody and hearing a lot of the inside baseball and some of the, the stuff that a lot of us aren't privy to, like how has that changed your record collecting as a whole? Well, you know, the, the funny thing is the first time I went to Jim's store and I'm looking at these records and, and I'm like, God, these prices are so freaking high. I bought this record, this, you know, really cheap, you know. <laughs> so that Zeppelin, I get it really cheap. I knew nothing about pressings. 
I knew none of that stuff. This is 2017. And so, and so, you know, the first time I went in there, I didn't buy anything. I just looked around. I go, oh, oh I forget it. And, and I left. Well, I came back and I began talking to Jim. And, you know, then I found that, that Spaceman 3. But then we began to talk. Jim talked to me about Discogs and actually showed me Discogs, showed me what to do on Discogs. And, and so he educated me with that and it really you know and nine months later i wound up getting my whole collection on, on onto discogs so that's kind of where it all started with just going in and i'm learning this and we're talking and then just going through and and i'm a creature of habit i i mean it's just you know my, my video it's gonna be sunday it's gonna be 5 a.m by god i swear to god so I would just go into gym. You know, on Sundays is the one day I really I'm I'm not hooked up to work. Six days a week I'm hooked up. Okay. Sundays I'm not. Jim opens at noon. He's one of the few record stores he was open at noon. You know, everyone's closed on Sunday. So for me, this was a perfect reason and a thing to go there. Didn't have to go far. And so he'd open at noon. You know, I would have my whole afternoon, I'd go golfing or something else, and I'd just go in there and start shopping, and then we would just begin to talk. Awesome. And just got to, you know, this is, yeah, like here's Sunday at noon. So this is still, I also, you know, I, I, I tell people it's like Norm and Cheers. I had, there was a stool <laughs> yeah. there that I sit in, you know, you can yeah. bet on Sunday. I, I know what that's like. My friend Billy Hurst has his shop and I just go right to the stool and we just talk. It's, it's great. But yeah. um, so, so Jim, at what point did you know you were in the, in the presence of a YouTube celebrity like Steve Carlson? How, <laughs> yeah. did, how does, how does he slip that to you? Or, or did you find it on your own through your own YouTube travels? No, we talked. I mean, in our Sunday conversations, uh, you know, Steve would mention that his YouTube channel. But again, like you said earlier, it was the uh, the outpouring of support mm -hmm. after the flood that really helped, really helped take that off for him or help that take off. Um, but no, it's a uh, it's a fantastic thing because uh, you know he'll he'll wear the T-shirt once in a while if you can see it without cat jumping in front of him <laughs> um, or our T-shirt. <laughs> But it's always, you know, the mentions too. And he does this for lots of other record stores and lots of other people as well. But, um, uh, you know, every Sunday I, it's like, okay, he holds them up. Like, oh, there's one. There's one. Yep. There's one. He goes, found this at my local, found this at my local. And, uh, you know, we talked about the big collections that I brought in. And I think one of the, one of the ones that had Steve the most worked up was this massive punk collection from a few years oh, ago. Dang. And he was just, uh, he was looking at that one as, uh, as a as a uh, a grail finder yeah so. and I, I was slobbering jim was nice enough to slowly put it out oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah put it out because i didn't want to overwhelm you <laughs> yeah hey, you don't want to overdose one of your biggest customers i'm sure right you want to oh, know no. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you know, we also really got to know each other. We we had a mutual friend, uh, Michigan Record Club, Bill Young. Oh, sure. And sure. so he was some, you know, he was good friends with Jim. I got to know Bill. Of course, Bill's why I got onto YouTube. Uh -huh. I saw one of his things. So you know, that's really. So we had this, you know, there'd be three of us in there, and uh, that really, you know, helped, you know, kind of make made a lot of fun. Did uh the Michigan Record Club. Now I follow it on Facebook, even though I'm not in Michigan. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. But uh, is that something that kind of just started organically, like through Bill Young, or or, or how did that kind of come about? Hey, Jim, wasn't it through Bill Young? He started that up. It was, it was through Bill. He had started that up as just a means of connecting with other record collectors in the yeah. Tri City area, and then it expanded out to statewide. Just a great place for people to gather, talk, show off their stuff. Um, uh, but it also involved the the record show in Bay City, and then the one that we did several years ago as well. But uh, as just a, a means to bring people together, talk about uh, where they can go to get uh, their record shows or record stores that they like. But basically, just camaraderie of saying, "Look what I got! This is cool!" And having everybody else say, "They yeah, asked that is cool. Good job." Yeah, but yeah, Bill, that was that was all Bill uh, kind of getting that going with a small clutch of admins. Uh, that he brought on board, and uh, he, he's missed terribly. By the way, I got to add sure. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, did uh, well. Let's talk. Let's talk about the podcast. Enough, enough of the jibber jabber. That's what the people came. For. Give the people what they want. Right. That's that one. That's a famous song. Um, so the idea behind two guys talking about records. How 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 does this birth into existence? Is it Jim? Did you wake up in a cold sweat one night and and just look to the sky and say we need to do a podcast? <laughs> or through these Sunday talks? 
Uh, and we can kind of get into the organic because I believe you guys film on Sundays, right? It's still a continuation of your your normal uh, interaction. How did the podcast? Yep. Where, where did the idea come from? Well, yep, if I could, ahead. Steve, when we if we started <laughs> yes. on this one, it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> leaning back to, I mean, when I mentioned I was in higher ed and I had actually taught classes on podcasting at its infancy. I mean, early on when you actually had to know a few things. Like when John Tetch was a big podcaster, like the beginning. Yes. And the drag and drop stuff nowadays makes it so much easier. But building on, you know, Steve and his YouTube channel, we had a fledgling YouTube channel here at the store that I was using to essentially just help promote the store and sell records. And uh, it never really took off. I tried a few different things. We tried a, a long format uh, show for a while called the record show where I did interviews. We had uh, right through StreamYard, for example, we had Alice Cooper, Mark Farner, uh, oh. uh, Susie Quattro on. Lots yeah. of folks that we worked with to try to get in all around the idea of promoting records and selling records. That show was really kind of a nightmare to produce weekly while I was still trying to do the stuff here at the store. So I broke that out uh, after a while. It was about a year ago I stopped doing that. And started doing smaller mini segments. We do one on Saturday about new releases, Mm -hmm. which came out of that bigger show. Um, I had a smaller one. And one of the other big collections we brought in was just this massive psych rock collection. And and so I kind of began to um, document my discovery. You know, I'm kind of weak on the psych rock side. So I started doing these psych rock things. And as part of that, one of them was a, a really rare one from the Velvet Underground. And I know Steve is a big Velvet Underground fan. And so I asked him to come in. And we did uh, kind of a, a pairing on this for one of my segments about psychedelic rock and talked about the the Velvet Underground albums that Steve brought in. That kind of went from there. And I th- one day, I don't even remember, it was it was obviously over 27 weeks ago, Steve, because <laughs> we're <laughs> coming up on that episode where um, I just said, you know what? Steve comes in every single Sunday. Uh, a podcast, just audio podcast, would be a heck of a lot easier than me shooting and editing video again on top of everything else I'm doing. Now, granted, that's what you're having some fun with that. <laughs> so I, I, I approached Steve and I said, so, you know, what would you think? We come in and we talk about records every Sunday as it is. What do you think? And I'll kind of toss to Steve at the, the aftermath of that question. Yeah, I, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. You're here. Yeah, yeah. A podcast. I've never listened to one. Okay. Let's do that. And I'm really, yeah, I'm and not, I, did, I, I don't normally listen to podcasts because I listen, I'm just listening to music all the time. But I'd wanted it to be, you know, it's not slickly produced. It's basically, you know, we, we thought of, an, we're trying to think of a name. It's like, well, it's two guys talking about records. What do we call it? Yeah. Two guys talking Perfect. about records. Mm-hmm. And literally all we do is he sits down at our counter. I'm on one side. He's on the other side. I put a microphone in between us. And we, we, we talk about the subject matter ahead of time. And so there is some structure to it sure. and there's a little bit of production to it, but for the most, most part, it's just us talking about a, a topic a week or a couple topics a week of whatever we really decide we want to talk about. And it seems it's to be like working. What we, okay. We're doing every, every Sunday anyway, you know, yeah. just come in yep. and, you know, I, I would look around a little bit and we just sit, talk and we would just we'd talk about records. So it just, yeah, it worked out well. I was just, you know, just pure fun. And it is. It's just still a blast to do. How much? Uh, how much? Uh, you talk about the idea that kind of came very organically, but obviously, you have to do a little research. I found this out myself about how to host a, a podcast and how to get distribution, all that stuff. How much? And, and you already said it. I mean, you got the shop, and you've got obviously life stuff. You cut the grass. Like yep. I, I can completely empathize with that. How do you find time to the? curl off i mean is this in the in the bathroom i hate to say it are you, is is it bathroom time where you got to do this research about podcasts and where it goes like how, how did you dedicate the time to learn all that stuff and teach yourself on the fly well again i mentioned that that i had taught this stuff several years ago okay so it was oh, yeah so really you already just, had a running was, start yeah. that makes sense yeah, yeah okay. it was it was kind of a refresher course for me um you know aside from having to do the rss feeds and things like that uh, there's easier ways to do it, but we just kind of to streamline this. We started off with the Podbean uh, site, which is right. handles it for you. Pay them a few bucks a month, and from there it steps into the bigger ones like iHeart and Spotify. And Steve thinks that reminds me I got to work on the Apple thing here. So, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, I took the easier road rather than 
a lot of other independent podcasters who have to deal with a lot of their licensing and other stuff. We wanted to streamline it and keep it as easy as possible to produce based on, you know, both my time and Steve's time sure. and it works. So, you know, we take, we take uh, about an hour or so between talking yeah. and prepping and, and actually recording. And then throughout the day on Sunday in between customers, I'll edit uh, the small amount of edits that we need to do. And then I'll have it up by um, in the evening. I edit, uh, you know, I, I use, Again, I'm I'm pretty good at editing, so I can I can knock it off fairly quickly in that in that respect. And this is before the store opens on Sunday, like you guys do the principal yeah. uh, recording. Yes. Yeah, we learned and, we learned to lock the doors too. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and Jim does it. All. I mean, I I I don't know anything about it. I, I, I just come in. Actually, I do research beforehand. So. I'm just saying, I've, li- yeah. I've listened to the show, Steve, and e- either you have an encyclopedic knowledge of all things records, or there is a degree of homework that, that, that you do do. Come on now. There is. No, I, I actually, and that's what I enjoy. I, I love researching. I love looking into music. Why is this? What's something fun about this? I, I, I get pure enjoyment out of that. And so, you know, to do this, it's just, yeah. I For four years in college, I worked in the library, for God's sake. So it's like, hey, all right, I'm going to open up a book. What? There's a computer. I can look at that too, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, good time. Makes sense. How, so how I can handle the technical like, side of things, but I, I lean on Steve for let's let's. He's a creative, clearly a creative. Yes. You can just tell, yeah. you know. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, it just goes. We don't know. You know what? We kind of know what we're talking, what we got <laughs> going. But Lord knows, you know, it just yep. starts going. Well, that leads me. That leads me to ask you guys: How do you come up with your topics? Because your topics are pretty, pretty current for the most part. You know, like I, I listen to you guys when I'm on the treadmill most times, and uh, you know, it's it's it's. I wouldn't, you know, breaking news ish. I mean, it's very contemporary topics. I'm sure there's some probably long ideas that you make some notes here and there, but but do you have it really mapped out for a while, or is it something as as innocuous as? On a Tuesday, you know, Discogs change their seller fees and you guys like a line on, hey, guess what we're talking about this weekend? How does that work? Um, what well, you know, that that does happen at times. But Jim and I have have a spreadsheet where we have a lot of topics on there. And as we come up with a topic, we just add it on there. So, you know, we'll, you know, getting toward, you know, middle of the week, Jim will go, what do you want to talk about this week? You know, one of us will pick, you know, what the topic's going to be. We're going to look at that. But if there is something, you know, especially Jim's more in tune, he sees, hey, this is what's going on, or I might hear something. Well, why don't we talk about that? Because it's pressure. It's what's happening right now. And so, you know, we, we, we dig into that. And how do you, how do you guys hey. navigate I was going to say, how do you guys navigate the schedule in terms of, because you guys have lives, you guys are taking vacations. Do you do, do you put a couple in the can kind of thing for those kind of events? Or are you guys that structured that you're like, Hey, Jim's out this weekend. So we're going to use one. We're going to do two on Sunday. Like, how does that work? That's, it's that that's oh, that's that's how struck that. because that's just <laughs> yeah. me you know that's just hey I, jim i'm not going to be here next thing all right we'll do it too like i just come in an hour early you know, like ernie so banks let's play two right okay yep 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 exactly. so yeah it's a little a little less topical in that case when we do that but that's you know we're still talking about records yeah. no it's, and, and and trust me that when it quits being fun that's you know what i mean time to get out but yeah. yep tell me tell me about you know because obviously one of the reasons you know, Bono Community Podcast got off the ground was I was looking for guys talking about records on a regular basis. And one thing that's great about your show is you guys have an episode every Sunday, right? And you know, like I said, you guys are very topical. You look at it from inside the record collector's mind. How uh, do you feel that through the podcast, this is sharpening your your lens in terms of your, your own record collecting? Or is it just another tool in the toolkit? Uh, sharpening. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about those weapons at that store, Steve, like the Trident. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I think it, there, there, there is a lot of stuff we talk about that, you know, I did not know. And it, it, it I find that very interesting. And, and that's the thing, you know, as we do these topics, they all have been very interesting for me. Yeah, there is new things that, 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 that we definitely do find out. And, you know, because I'm looking at stuff he's looking at. I don't know what Jim researched. He doesn't know what I researched. And so we get together. We all have our own notes and we just start pushing it together. You know, we don't collaborate before that. It's just, okay, we just go. And maybe it's the same thing, but generally we've looked at different things. 
And I think it's worked very well for us so far in the fact that uh, it adds to the spontaneity of this. Yes, we have a rough idea of what we're talking about, but you know, I'd rather have the conversation unfold naturally like it would be even if we weren't recording it. And uh, as far as sharpening the, you know, Steve mentioned he learns things. I pick up stuff from him all the time that I didn't know about. So I think that works well between the two of us uh, and the conversations that we have. I just hope that people find it interesting enough to listen for 35 to 40 minutes. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it has, you know, my, my, my son was nice enough to point out, he listened to my, uh, the podcast once he goes, that Jim's the quarterback, man. He's really good. And he just takes it and he'll pass the ball off to you here and there, but you know, but Jim's professional, he's done this. And so it makes a huge difference. You know, me, it's definitely not professional. So uh, it, 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 it works well that way. You know, I just, we both laugh. We have a great time with it. And I think that shows through the podcast because we actually are just pretty much laughing the whole time through. I mean, it's, it's, yep. it's great fun. But, <laughs> you know, Jim is a hell of a quarterback. It really keeps it keeps it on track, which is good for me. Well, that's why when you said you had a background in, in, in radio from back in the day, Jim, I'm not surprised because as, as somebody listening to the show, like it's clear, like you're, you, if, if I wouldn't say you're the taskmaster, I wouldn't say anything like that, but it's clear that you have like a, a, either a gift or a background in it because you are like going through, churning through the topics and, you know, Steve's like a stallion. You got to make sure that you keep him, keep him in the fencing line because he made this break through because he's, he'll get on a topic and run. So it's very evident from somebody from the outside that you know what you're doing. And I need you to repeat that again a second time for my wife because she's the one that <laughs> needs to keep me in line. Steve, uh, she's been my producer from television, from our television and radio days. As she, we actually worked together at a TV station for a while. Oh, wow. She was my boss and she would keep us on track here. And even at some of the time she's working in the store on a Sunday and she's, uh, you know, I see her finger wags or she goes, wrap it up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so again i mentioned earlier she's the brains yeah yeah you can't say that <laughs> she's right that's amazing really why that's funny so now so well, she's of, right well kind of kind of go about next steps for you guys so you're on podbean as as vinyl community podcast is you got iheart you're, you're you're putting your toes apple sounds like the next step in terms of your distribution is yep. it, do you envision bringing uh like you said before jim you were and in your previous incarnation on the YouTube channel, you had Alice Cooper and all these guests. Do you envision bringing others into the fold of this little, little thing that you and Steve have built on Sundays? Because like, like Steve said, he's like Norm, you know, he's like Cliff Clavin. Like you've got a thing going, bringing somebody in to mess up that diamond or make it better. Is that something you guys have thought about? We've entertained here and there, but I don't know how deeply. Just like, no, no, me, no thing. No, no, Dave, man. No, 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 no. You know, the, the fact that we've made it uh, 27 episodes now and uh, we haven't been kicked off of Spotify, I think we're doing all right. I mean, it's always it's always there for the expansion. The the stuff that I used to do on YouTube and bringing in these other guests and um, when you get to folks like Cooper, it's, it's a hoop and a half to jump through oh, sure, to get these sure. people lined up and then try to get a schedule that works. So if we were to do something like that, it would definitely have to, I think it would take the podcast to another level. Yes, that's that's a given. But I don't know as if either of us, us have the time right at the moment to devote to making something like that happen. And, you know, and that kind of pulls from our spontaneity. I mean, it really is. It does, just, yeah. I mean, it just. We're, we're just have it, it's it's just it's our Sunday routine. We just sit and talk, and you know, just just we have a specific subject instead of going all all, all, all over the place. And you know, pure fun. Nice. Well, to put a ball, I on do it, have I, Alice Cooper's email still, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. No. Well, I, I couldn't have you guys on the show and, and talk about all these things without asking you a, a point. I might ask each a pointed record collector question. And, you know, I was because I'm still like, again, it's our first year doing this. I'm still trying to figure out my formula in other ways, too. But um, I'm always curious to hear, like, especially, Jim, for your perspective, I'll start with you. What do you think is the biggest challenge, at least now, for the hobby in the sense that um, is it the rising costs? Is it um, the is it a used dry drying up from your from your point of view? What do you, do you what do you see on the horizon as a challenge for the hobby for the back half of the year? 
The I don't think the used is drying up. A lot of people think that that would happen. And I joked earlier saying that they don't make new old stuff anymore. But uh, what I've been finding, and this is the other thing with our podcast that we play off a lot of, is I'm a record store owner and Steve's a record collector. And that's the dynamic. Although you do know I'm a record collector at the same time. But sure. what I'm seeing on the store owner side is the fact that... Uh, there's a lot of younger people that have been getting into this. They jumped into this, especially during the closure times, during the uh, the odd times in 20 and 21, where entertainment was a little more difficult to come by. So records sure. had that big jump. Now we're finding that, uh, in not every case, but in, in a lot of cases, um, I'm seeing more younger people, folks in their 20s and early 30s, bringing back those newer records that they just bought for whatever reason. I got to oh. pay for college. I can't get a car. So instead of seeing 50 year old, 40 year old classic rock records, we're beginning to see used records that are either reissues or a lot of newer indie rock stuff from not too far back. I always see a cutie there, by the way. Yeah, so we, if you're, that's, yeah, if you're yeah. watching, though, Steve has brought a ringer on, on, onto this thing. Jim, I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead and finish your thought and then we'll, we'll get that's our right. guest started. <laughs> No, I was just basically saying that if there's a dynamic that or a challenge that's coming in, it's going to be navigating this uh, newer supply of newer records that people who have gotten into collecting, may they be, they just didn't feel like it was right for them and they're getting out of it. Um, the cost is always there. The rising yeah. cost of new records is always going to be a challenge and it's going to push more people toward the used market. And that's why, again, stores like ours that attempt to balance that new versus used is always going to be that, uh, well, that balance, you know, what's going to work best. That makes sense. And Steve, uh, guest starring your, your grandson, you want to do an introduction? Uh, yeah. First off, what gets a video better is kittens, dogs, and babies. <laughs> that always ups I mean, themselves. So I mean, this, this, this is going to go viral. This, 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 this is, is a viral sensation. Yes. We, we just, we this just, eight this. Month, you know, we just turned eight months, Aiden. So, uh, and he has puke on him. So. <laughs> delightful delightful well steve we'll, we'll end it with this as a as a record collector yourself mm -hmm. what what have you noticed that's cha like changed the most this past year and and is it like we were talking about is it the cost like is, is it on the horizon like how do you think anything you're saying that may change the way you collect obviously you talked about the flood and collecting with more purpose and intentionality of what you actually bring in is any yeah. of that changing because obviously there's so much jazz there's all these things all these uh, uhqrs there's all these acronyms and all this stuff yep. flying at you how is how is your pov uh, changed and, and what do you see on the horizon for the back half of the year as a record it has really changed with that chance uh Especially, you know, I, I was into the UHQRs. I was into, you know, trying to get all these tone poets and stuff like that. I, I've totally backed off. I look and I wait for them to go on clearance, quite honestly. Smart. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you watch, you can watch Amazon and, you know, tone poets just start dropping in prices eventually. Uh, and, and that's the only way I, I just can't justify putting that out when I can come to Jim and, you know, he'll have an OG and maybe that OG is going to be more expensive, but it means so much more, sure. so much cooler. Uh, and, and, and so I'm more apt to go that route. So I've just totally kind of, you know, I, I, I'm still in the hunt for new music. I love new music. I'm looking for something new and exciting, you know, African music. I'm always out there going for, but, uh yeah, I, I, I definitely backed off from the whole high fidelity because it doesn't mean that much to me. I think for a collector, for money-wise, hey, maybe it's going to go up in value, but it's just there's too much of it. It isn't like at the start where MoFi was very limited. Yes. No, I mean, there's just tons of it, 10,000. It's limited to 10,000. <laughs> yeah, really? That's limited. Right. I thought that would be like 200, <laughs> but what do I know? I'm not that smart. So, uh Yeah. That's kind of where I've changed mine. Oh, oh you're really crabby. And, and by the way, Chance, just I just got a comp. You are like the the king interviewer, you know. <laughs> oh, I, uh, come on, get out of here! Right. Right. Yes. No, no, you are. <laughs> you're very good at this. See, this is the way he's buttering me up, folks. He's buttering me up here. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that, Steve. But anyway, well, let, let's put a bow on it, guys. It's been such a. I mean, we've been trying to put this together for a few months here, so I'm glad yeah. we were finally able to lock up some time yeah. and. 
And yeah, even when thanks. Steve on his channel was talking about starting a podcast with you, Jim, I went to your channel. And I was like, oh, I've, I've seen your videos in passing about the store and stuff and got to know you. And then obviously listening to the show, uh, it's nice to have those options out there. You would think like this is a very competitive space. But at the end of the day, like I said, I was simply looking for people talking about records on a regular basis. There's a lot of record podcasts out there once a month, once a quarter, whatever, but you guys do it every week, just like we try to do on Violent Community Podcast, and that's, I think, the more the merrier when it comes to that. So, so anyway, word salad, Aiden's ready to eat. I don't blame him. I am, too. I want to thank my my uh, my guests, the host of Two Guys Talking About Records. You can catch it on Podbean as the host. If you want to do the Podbean app, it's on Spotify, iHeartRadio. I um, if coming soon to Apple, it sounds like, so I'd highly recommend it. It's a yep. great listen. Jim, oh, sorry, Jim. We also put it on our, yeah, we also put it on our YouTube channel here at the store. That's the right. That's well. right. Yes. Yes. You got on the YouTube distro too. But uh, Jim Gleason, Radio Wasteland Records shop owner. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. And then the the, the immortal, the mastermind, the mayor, not no longer the mayor. You're the mastermind. Steve, you, re, you revealed so much on this podcast. Yeah. Steve Carlson, literally the nicest guy in the vinyl community. Pleasure. The record collector and the guy with the dynamite. awesome all right well thanks for joining us here guys appreciate you and that was another trip around the turntable thanks for listening to vinyl community podcasts